Ferrari's incredible win in Australia might have been helped by Max Verstappen's untimely exit from the race, but by all accounts, Ferrari were quick enough to challenge the Red Bulls anyway. Red Bull aren't sitting still though, and the aerodynamic wizard Adrian Newey has sent a chilling warning to the rest of the teams. With the legendary Suzuka circuit next up on the calendar, the on-track racing is going to be intense, and Red Bull's competitors will need every edge they can get. Ferrari are going to be coming out fighting, but the track, with a large percentage of high and medium speed corners, could see Mercedes have an even worse weekend than they did at Albert Park. Haas and RB, as the early leaders of the bottom five, will be rubbing their hands in glee at the idea of picking up more points while the Silver Arrows flounder. The Australian Grand Prix saw a small smattering of upgrades across the grid. It was almost exclusively front, rear, and beam wings that were unwrapped and fitted to the cars, as the teams looked to make the most of Australia's medium and high-speed corners, a characteristic shared with the upcoming Japanese Grand Prix at the Suzuka International Racing Course. Despite Ferrari's impressive performance in Australia, though, few people will be betting on them to repeat the feat in Japan and give Verstappen his first back-to-back -back race losses since early July in 2022, when he lost in Silverstone and Austria on consecutive weekends. Red Bull's chief technology officer Adrian Newey and his designers have created another almost unstoppable race winner in the RB20. This year's Red Bull is looking like the class of the field once again, despite the retirement of Max Verstappen over the weekend. Red Bull's dominance has been particularly impressive because when the new technical regulations were revealed, many teams complained that they were far too prescriptive, not leaving enough room to experiment and innovate. However, F1 Chief Technical Officer Pat Simmons has said that Adrian Newey believes there is plenty more to come from the current generation of Formula 1 cars. Having been at the heart of designing the regulations of the current era of ground-effect Formula 1 cars, Simmons, himself a multiple world champion winner at Team Enstone in the days as Benetton and Renault, moved into his current role in 2017 as part of the regulatory side of the sport. While the teams may look at the regulations and believe there may be diminishing returns on their current innovations, Simmons said that, from having spoken to Red Bull's chief technical officer, there is still room to grow yet. Yeah, I think I did, Simmons told the Beyond the Grid podcast when asked if he thought there would still continue to be design revolution in the third year of the current regulations. I was pleased when we first saw the cars in 2022. There were a lot of different solutions. But you know, to any engineering problem, there is only one solution. Now, luckily, we never get there. We iterate towards it, and we're seeing that iteration in certain areas. The downwash side pods are becoming the way to do things. But when you look at something like this year's Red Bull, interesting intakes into the side pods, intakes above the sort of headrest area, lots of things. I can't say I anticipated exactly that was the way it was going. But I'm very pleased to see there are still changes. And I know from speaking to Adrian Newey that it's not over yet. There's plenty more to come. The idea that Red Bull are planning to continue to bring big innovation to their car will worry the rest of the teams on the grid. A lot of talk over the winter was about the regulations converging, and some teams sounded like they were using it as a crutch to help them close the gap on Red Bull. Not that the threat of more Red Bull innovation is going to stop them from trying, and Ferrari in particular have some huge plans for grasping control of this year's championship. Despite acknowledging these slim odds, Ferrari boss Fred Vasseur has expressed his ambitions for Ferrari, pointing towards a strategic aim at the Constructors' title following a remarkable performance in Melbourne, where Carlos Sainz led Ferrari to a spectacular 1-2 finish, capitalizing on Verstappen's unexpected brake mishap. Vasseur's ambition was clear. This is the objective, he declared. But it's also to fight for the driver's title, even if this year it is perhaps a little early for that, but we'll see. Obviously, all the top teams come into a season wanting to fight for a title, but to hear the Ferrari boss boldly declare it as his team's aim means he believes it is possible this season. Ferrari are the best place team to take on Red Bull, with McLaren running a close second, though a few tenths behind the Scuderia in terms of deficit to Red Bull. Normally, the development race doesn't rear its head until the first European round of the season. It takes time to compile data and then design and build the upgrades. Nonetheless, 
technical director of Ferrari Enrico Cardiel and his technical department designed a new rear wing that made its debut in Melbourne. Though it seems like a lifetime ago now, the SF24 was widely criticized at its pre-season launch for its relatively basic design. Across F1 news outlets and social media channels, the consensus was that Ferrari's 2024 package was overly conservative. It now seems, though, that the team were simply building a really solid base to build upon, and they'll continue that in Suzuka. The Formula Uno livestream is a good place to get accurate Ferrari updates, and it has some gems this week. According to Guiliano Duchessa, Ferrari will bring something new to the SF24 in Japan. He actually said there might be a few new things. It won't be till Imola we get to see the start of the big upgrade package for the SF24, but the team will have more performance to add on at Suzuka. The most notable changes at Imola will be the tighter deck lids and the air intakes, but there will also be a new floor for the car. He said that Ferrari consider the Imola package to be a more extreme, almost B-spec car, which will give them a big push in the battle with Red Bull. The biggest problem Ferrari have at the moment is that they struggle to get brand new soft tires into the right temperature window for qualifying. That is why Max Verstappen has taken pole position at all three races this season. The Red Bull just turns its tire on quicker. The trade-off for that, though, is that the Red Bull is struggling with tire degradation, while Ferrari barely hurt their tires over the length of a race stint. That is the complete flip of the situation last year, where Ferrari were fighting for pole position at every race, but couldn't come anywhere near the Red Bulls in the actual race. Hopefully, the additional upgrades in Japan can help continue their attack on Red Bull's position at the top of the sport. They are far from the only team planning early upgrades this year, though. A number of F1 outfits completely overhauled their cars in preparation for the 2024 season, some to more success than others. One such team was the Racing Bulls, who ended 2023 relatively well, and with more Red Bull parts being incorporated into the newly named V-Carb 01 car than ever before, many teams were worried that they may get an unfair boost in competitiveness. The Racing Bulls team have had a disappointing start to the 2024 Formula 1 season, scoring only 6 points so far. Daniel Ricciardo is in the middle of all of this, making no contributions towards the points, and the team are already getting fed up with his performances. Daniel may be given a boost, though, as the team plans to introduce significant updates to the V-Carbo 1 at the Suzuka Grand Prix. This includes the introduction of a new specification, including a massive upgrade of a new floor, aimed at improving performance. Daniel in particular will be hoping the upgrade can give him some confidence in the car that he's looked very uncomfortable in. Another team and two drivers in desperate need of some upgrades is Alpine. Like Daniel Ricciardo, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly are both out of contract at the end of the year and need the best car they can get to give them an opportunity to sell themselves to the grid. Following their shock, lackluster performance in Bahrain and Jeddah, the French pair of Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly experienced a glimpse of hope in Melbourne, although minor issues ultimately marred their prospects. It's frustrating, Ocon expressed to Canal Plus, because I was in front of Magnussen, I was fighting with Albon, we were in the fight for the last points. But there will be new features on the car in Japan, he disclosed, hinting at upcoming enhancements for the next Grand Prix at the iconic Suzuka circuit. We will have to see how much this brings us in performance. Alpine has been the surprise package this season, but not in the usual positive sense. They have been abysmally bad despite the team completely overhauling their management structure in an attempt to move on from the Otmar Safnauer era that was unexplainably cut short. With a number of teams bringing new parts to Suzuka and the track favoring Ferrari over Red Bull, the Japanese Grand Prix is set to be a thriller of a race. Do Adrian Newey's comments about there being a lot more to come from Red Bull worry you, though? Or do you think Ferrari can really fight for a championship this season? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.